Hi, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. A real pleasure to have you here with us in beautiful Cannes. Same. Maybe you could just kick off with a brief introduction to Return to Seoul for people who don't know anything about it. What can they sure. expect? Sure. Um, my name is David Shu. I'm director of the film Return to Seoul. Um, it's placed at Un Certain Regard a few days ago. Uh, it's the story of a female character named Freddy who was born in South Korea and adopted in France and grew up there. And the story starts when, at the age of 25, she's going back for the first time in Seoul. And for holidays, two weeks holidays, with some kind of naive approach to it, with no desire to meet her biological parents or do some kind of journey to the roots, but just to see what this country looks like. And after a couple of days being there, she ends up meeting her biological father and the family of her father. And from that moment, things, I would say, go a bit wrong. <laughs> um, and I absolutely love the film. It feels very uh, unique, both in the subject matter, but also, you know, just the, that main character and, and the look and feel of the film. Maybe you can say a little bit about, about the inspiration behind it, because I believe it was actually based kind of on a friend of yours who had some sort of experience. Yeah. It's, um, it's, the story comes from it's a story that happened to me some more than 10 years ago. I was going for the first time in South Korea, showing my first documentary. And then one of my best friends, whose name is Laure Badufle, we studied together and she experienced an adoption. She was born in Korea and she adopted in France, in the south of France. And at that time, she already went to South Korea, lived there two years, met her biological parent twice, her father, sorry, twice, and she used to tell me that things didn't go well and she didn't want to go back there anymore. But when she knew I was going there, she just found me a bit unpredictable and full of contradiction as my character for it. And she said, I just took one week holiday and I'm gonna, I'm gonna come with you and show you my country. And I said, okay, no problem. And she said, she added, I remember, but we're not gonna meet my father, I hate him. I said, okay, I didn't ask anything. <laughs> and so we ended up being in Pusan together uh, in the biggest Asian film festival in the world discovering soju parties, like drinking soju parties that I try to portray in the film. And after two days of that, she just told me, I just texted my dad, I'm gonna meet him tomorrow, do you wanna come? And I just said, okay, let's do it. And so the day after, we took a bus from Pusan to Jinju, which is a small town in south of South Korea. We brought together with us a young Korean girl who was speaking French, who I just met, to help us translate little like in the film, and in, after one hour and a half, we were sitting at the table in that kind of traditional chicken soup restaurant, like in the film, mm -hmm. <clears throat> facing her biological dad and her biological grandma. Mm -hmm. And of course, I never experienced anything like that. And it was also very, very moving experience to see these two worlds who were supposed to be so connected and were so disconnected. Mm -hmm the impossibility of communicating with the language, but also with the cultural differences. So much emotions and unspoken things for so many years were making the, the impossibility of really being able to share so much anger as well from my friend, obviously, that didn't let her be able also to create possibility of a nice moment because she was refusing also that to them. And, Anything, it, so, yeah, it was full of contradiction and contradictory feelings and I was just thinking at the time, wow, that's, that's already a movie scene. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, but of course as a director you also see things like that and I took a lot of notes and I was just dreaming in my, in my mind like if one day I can make a film out of it, that's, I think that's a fascinating story. Yeah. But I never dared to talk to my friend about it until 2017 when after my last film I was rethinking of that and we met. She was selling weapons, actually, in London at that time, which is also an aspect of Freddy's character. And I confessed to her about this idea, and she said, yes, let's do it. Mm -hmm. And then several weeks later, she sent me 40 pages documenting her experience going back to South Korea, meeting her parents, but also her life there. Mm -hmm. And then <clears throat> another 20 pages about her life in France, being adopted, what it means to be an Asian girl in an environment in the countryside where she didn't have any Asian other people around her, suffering from racism at a very young age, and all this fed the story that eventually became Return to Soul. And it's quite astounding to <clears throat> realize that Park Jimin 
wasn't actually a professional actress because yeah, her performance is. is so phenomenal. So maybe you can talk about casting her, but also this really um, exciting collaboration you had and where she sort of tested you um, on your portrayal, I guess, yeah. of uh, an Asian woman, um, but also kind of expectations of how she, someone should be in that role and, and kind of maybe kind of uncovering your male gaze, let's say. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, it's uh, making film is strange because uh, you can write a script for three years, but depending on who's going to interpret the character, it's going to be a totally different film. And I, I'm not sure I believe in God, but I thank God to have the chance to meet her actually on my way because she's not an actress. She's an artist. She never, ever, never, ever thought of playing in a film. <coughs> I had the chance to speak with a friend of her who is a Korean adoptee artist. His name is Erwan Agun Larcher. And we discussed together about adoption, about his relationship to Korea. I talked to him about my project of film that was in 2019. And then he talked to me about her saying that everything you say for the character, it's strange because he looked like Park Jimin, my friend. And she's not adoptee. She's born in Korea and she writes to friend when she was eight, became an artist here in France. But somehow her personality, like, is similar to the characters, like, okay, let's meet. So we met with Jimin. We didn't, the first, we just spent three hours in a cafe in Paris, talking about our lives, our experience of life, talk a little about my friend, Laure, about the film I wanted to make, but her, about her experience, <coughs> arriving in France and, 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 and all that. And I was, the, the connection was very strong, but it's after when we make casting tests that she revealed herself to have this natural, raw talents, this very specific thing that sometimes non-professional can have, but it's very rare that they will be so unaware of the surrounding, the people looking at them. They so much don't care sometimes of their own image and representation that suddenly they can just be here, here now with their emotion. And that's exactly what Jimmy was doing. And so, yeah, with my experience of my previous film, like filming that the first time I was just thinking, okay, I, she can do it because she has this, this thing that it's, it's hard to have. But after that, of course, you need to work. So we work for like uh, weeks. And when you were telling about like um, challenging me on, 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 on many aspects, there was during the rehearsal time that before going to Korea, we had like these two months, three months that I was planning to do rehearsal together. I was thinking it's going to be just rehearsal and bringing like the, the attitude and technical attitude to act. But it ended up differently where on the first meeting she was telling me Davy, actually, I read the script again, and I have, before we start anything, I have questions to ask you, and something that I find a bit problematic. It's like, okay, wh what are you talking about? And I was like thinking maybe it's going to be a 10 minute discussion to solve things, but no, it became like days and days of questionment and super precise that I didn't expect on the script, on the character, on the dialogue, <coughs> sorry, on the dialogue, on the relationship between the character and other characters, especially male characters, but also female characters. Question of gender, question of positionment of who is this French girl arriving to that country and behaving somehow as a kind of very French arrogant uh, neo-colonializer into South Korea and what it means and how we should portray that in a, in a conscious way. All these kind of questions were raised by her. The way that she was thinking that sometimes I reproduce cliché of a male gaze um, perspective of feminine, um, of the, the way of the, the, the character deal with her femininity and stuff like that. So all that was extremely challenging. Uh, not easy actually, to be honest, because it was, I was resisting and I was trying to debate, justify myself, understanding her point of view, but also define my point of view. And until the point that we became, um, it, 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 it became a bit tense eventually. And not only with Jimin, but also with the other actress playing Tena, the best friend of Freddie in the first part. She's played by a Korean writer named Guka Han, who also never expected to be an actress, and it was her first time. But I was facing this artist and this writer, so obviously intellectual and artist, having their own experience of being Asian female living in Europe for many years, and facing my perspective that was very different between French with, or Asian, but I'm born in France, and male. So, I said that was a bit painful, even tearful sometimes, until the point that I had to understand that if I was still resisting and trying to win with the debate, like 
with my French education and the pleasure of debate, I will lose them, actually. And if I lost them, if I have lost them, there wouldn't be no film because they were the perfect interpret for the film, obviously. And so I had to give up in a way and let go and understand that it was time for me to listen, to listen to what they have to say and to understand that maybe they're right and understand that they were right and, and to open the character to be reshaped by these discussions and their ideas. And that's really how the film was born, actually. You can spend three years working on a film very precisely. At the end, you need to be ready to destroy everything for the good of the film and for the good of the story and for the faithfulness of the character and the story. So that's what happened. And I think what, when we watch the film together, it's absolutely the result of that work. And I'm very really grateful that they did that. And, um, yeah, and, and for, yeah. And what do you hope people take away from watching it? Because you know, it raises all these themes about gender, about stereotypes, about identity and the complexity. Um, but there's also something very joyful just watching this character. I uh, think you yeah. referred to her as kind of an agent of chaos or something. And the way, <laughs> agent of chaos, yeah. way, The way she sort of uses anger and you know, resisting people's attempts to box her in or tell her how to behave. And you know, all this moment that you see her dancing to the music. She's a very liberated character. Yeah. So uh, what do you want to take away? I met these people in my life and I think I always admire them and a bit different. A lot of me is in Freddy, but this kind of way of daring to be someone not pleasable mm -hmm. and daring to be someone who's going to always say what she thinks or what they think to the, to the risk of creating problems and chaos. I know some people like that, they're good friends of mine, I'm not like that, and I kind of like admire them for being that, because, yeah, it's very liberating, and, some, and it always brings situation into different zones, then we don't know what's gonna happen after, and that's so interesting, because, yeah, yeah. And, and, and so I wanted the character to be like that. It's such a heavy situation, adoption stories, meeting your biological parents, it's, it's so sad, and, it's so tragic and it's so, yeah, so difficult that I, I was using this personality of the character to also surprise us, bring some kind of liberation and, 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 and helping us as well as audience to also see things differently with not only a tragic, it's, tra it's so tragic, but on a, not only a tragic perspective, but also a liberating perspective. I think the idea of emancipation and liberation was very important in the character, in how she deal with this kind of oppression that is surrounding her all the time, with, like from every perspective, even her, I mean, because it's like current society personifying by these male characters, the father, but also all this boyfriend that she meets, but even also her French adoptive mom in a way is also a source of oppression for her to kind of behave in a way. And, and Freddy is kind of a model for me of how she refused to be assigned to any identity. She refused to be uh, said how to behave and what to be. And she will always say no and reinventing herself in a surprising way and perspective. And I think that's very interesting. Mm. And just quickly, what does it mean to you to have your film playing here in Cannes? And do you see f um, festivals like this as kind of a platform to open up representation on screen? Because I think you're your film definitely offers something really fresh and, and challenges, like you yeah, say, like I, cliches. I believe it's, yeah, to be very honest, um, maybe I would not say the same thing a few years ago. This question of representation, it's obviously something close to me because my face shows that I, yeah, I had, had a story and it's not only a white French story. But in some time I felt a bit shy, maybe, before and maybe it was the result of my education and what I could call the, the integration assimilation French model that somehow France is very proud of but that sometimes need to be a bit challenged and requestioned and so I was saying I was a bit shy to, to make a film about that kind of topic maybe I, had, I needed time to understand more about also what my position is with that and to understand maybe the complexity of things and I can say that, yes, I am very proud today to bring a French character with Asian origin to Cannes Film Festival, showing that experience of life that is different than a French character that we've seen in so many French films, but also different than the Asian character in Asian movies. Mm -hmm. 
and to have also this person, this kind of like special personality that Freddie has, which is also a different kind of representation of the usual nice, soft female character that you see, including in Asian cinema, a lot from mostly male Asian directors. I think it's, it's yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of that. I, I think it's, 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 it's fun and I think, I think people will receive that character and see that, yeah, that's something new about it. And just in a sentence, can you know what you're working on next? Or not yet? Uh, holidays. <laughs> yeah. Good really. idea. <laughs> thank, you. Um, thank you so much for sharing all that thank with you. us and really enjoy the rest of the time in Cannes. Thank you. Thanks so much.